Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel where skincare is all about progression over perfection because perfection doesn't exist. Do excuse this, I accidentally um, got my beard trimmer, forgot to put the guard on it and just started hacking at my facial hairs. So ignore that, it will grow back in like two days. Today, I want to take a look at some Instagram versus reality pictures from the Instagram versus reality Reddit forum. Is it called a forum? I don't know what people call it nowadays. Just kind of look at them, see if I really think they're heavily photoshopped, if I do believe they're real, what the truth is behind these edited pictures. So let's take a look. So first of all, let's take a look at this picture of Kim Kardashian for the skin, um, Kim, skin by Kim's, no, oh my god, skin by Kim skincare campaign. We asked our founder how her skincare routine has inspired her barely there makeup moments. So, people were saying this is photoshopped, and it obviously is. When it comes to, well, first of all, She's gonna be wearing makeup in this picture. This isn't her about just having natural looking skin because this is about her barely there makeup, right? Light makeup that's meant to look like skin. However, is this picture photoshopped? Of course it is. It's a campaign featuring one of the Kardashians. I think people don't realize how much work goes into um, making something look not photoshopped. Do you know what I mean? Like, especially these kind of like all natural skin kind of campaigns. It's keeping things like, the right amount of fine lines in, the right amount of dents and grooves in the face, highlights where they need to be, etc. I think a really good example of this is back in the day, the um, America's Next Top Model Challenge, where they had a beauty shot, right? And then they showed their beauty shot photoshopped, then took away the photoshopped version and showed them with their natural skin texture. Fucking Janice Dickinson, whatever she's called, was like, oh my God, it's disgusting. But you can see how, whilst it's a fairly old Photoshop style now, you can see how much work goes into making somebody just look like they have really nice, normal, natural skin. You can see, for example, on her right eye, you know, to us, there's like one very fine line underneath it. And you can see that there's been some work. There's like a little bit of texture next to it, where you can see there's been a few things kind of like whisked, whisked away. But this thing, they keep things like, you see the bit of hair coming down. It's a little wifty bits coming off the hair to kind of like keep it all looking that little bit natural kind of thing. One thing I find very interesting, if you look at her eyebrow where that hair is falling, there's literally a line where it's dark and then light. I don't know whether that's just the version of the picture that I got off the Reddit forum, but it literally looks like they forgot to kind of blend that in for some reason. I don't know what they would have done there. Maybe removed a few more excess flyaway hairs. I don't know. But yeah, of course it's photoshopped. Now here's one that I found interesting. They got a picture of this YouTuber. I think, I believe she's a true crime YouTuber. I've come across some of her videos and if she's the one I think it is, love her videos. They're so good, so well informed, genuinely caring about them, the family of the victims and helping out. And they've kind of taken this picture of her on a thumbnail versus a picture of her, what I believe to be in a documentary or something like that. Now, I don't look at this and think, oh my God, she photoshops her thumbnails. I don't, because there's so, there's very, I say this every like Instagram versus reality video, but there's a difference between me here in my studio setup, right? Beauty lighting, essentially. Got a bit of tinted sunscreen on. I'm, you know, it's all like, it's all there for a reason, you know? Versus the kind of lighting that they use in these kind of like real life hard hitting documentaries. They purposely use lighting that makes everything look a little, little bit more grittier and um, natural, as natural as possible. To me, this looks like a one light kind of setup where they got one light on the side of her, shadows on the other side. And it's a very, very typical piece of lighting that they use in the, as I said, true crime documentary documentaries, um, natural disaster documentaries, mental health documentaries where they want to be like a little bit dark. However, it is not the most flattering lighting. It's not. Whenever you have one light shooting from one direction, you're going to get texture on your face that you're not going to see within natural daylight as well. So if, if you have a light shooting from here, you're going to get shadow all down here, especially in this groove here, it's going to show up texture even more because only one side of it's been hit with, with flattering lighting. You're going to get shadows under your eyes, you're going to get it under here. So this is one of those things where I feel like like the thumbnails her in very nice purposely lit lighting. You can see from her um, glasses, she got like a few soft boxes it looks like, and even possibly a ring light. Very normal influencer YouTuber setup, right? It's meant to make people look good or, or as nice as possible on camera. Versus the other lighting, the documentary style lighting that is supposed to look gritty. So it's like comparing somebody with makeup on without wearing the makeup, which a lot of people do, but going like, oh my God, why does she look like this here? And why does she look like that there? It's very different. One's purpose 
purposely meant to make them look a little bit um, grittier, as I keep saying, and one's meant to be very flattering. So it's comparing two very different styles of lighting that are supposed to do two very different things, the subject. So I think that's a massively, massively unfair comparison, in my opinion. And it's the same for this picture here. Is that Rosie Huntington Whiteley? I'm not massively good with my um, celebrities or models, I'll be honest. But again, this is the same kind of situation. From what I can tell, the picture where she looks pretty much perfect is done in maybe a hotel room, if not a hotel room with a purposeful studio setup, maybe even retouched a little bit as well. But the lighting is very different to what is essentially just office lighting on the other side. Now, am I saying that this picture hasn't been retouched? No, not at all. It's very, very clean, clearly been filtered in some way. It looks like a fairly decent professional job as well. So maybe that is actually part of a campaign, but whatever that is, the lighting has been very purposefully done to make her look smaller smooth and perfect. The other side is again, obviously she's gonna have texture, right? Everyone has texture. She's gonna have lumps and bumps like everyone else. But what I'm saying here is again, it's that really unflattering, what's the word? Like tungsten, luminous yellow kind of like office lighting, shooting down, showing up every single bit of texture on your face. So again, it's going from one extreme of Photoshop and filters and very flattering lighting to the other extreme of lighting you would never want to be seen stood under in real life, let alone with a, a camera. It's obviously nice to see people with texture on their skin, but I don't think it's fair to say like, this is what she looks like every day. In either of these pictures, that's not what she looks like every day. It's not a fair before and after because that texture is exaggerated. She won't look like that walking down the street. You know, she won't look like that if you meet her in a, a normally lit room. And she obviously won't look like her Photoshop self as well. So whilst yes, she's definitely been Photoshopped. It, it, looking at it now, it doesn't like a professional job. But the before filter picture isn't a fair example of probably what she looks like on a daily basis. It's a very unflattering lighting. You can see that sheerly from the sheer contrast of the picture. So I don't know who this man is, right? But this is what he looks like. I, I believe this was like on a Zoom interview versus the kind of pictures he posts. Now, this is a face pic job. And you can tell because I think face pic, the app has a very particular way that it makes people look. It kind of makes everybody look the same. It's kind of the Instagram Kylie Jenner makeup of, of, of the world. You know, it these filters are all the same on everybody else. So they all have this very same look. So you can tell from the way it kind of adds depth and like black outlines to the eyes, the added cheekbones, the white teeth, these are all preset filters within FacePic. And it's so obvious because they're, they're extreme. They are extreme in this case. I don't know how to explain it, but because I believe it's done by AI, you can see it does look like, like a load of filters have just been laid over the skin. I don't know how to explain it. Facebook, face pick has this very, very specific look to it. And again, purely because all the men that use it use the same filters and look the same, all the women that use it use it and look the same. So I think it's very easy to tell. But yeah, obviously that that's a, a um that's a job. That's a filter. It's like this picture here of Katie Price, and I don't know who this, this man is next to her. But again, you can see it's got those same kind of key features to the filter. This is obviously a face pick job. Again, if you look at the eyes, the irises have been circled black. There's like black around it, like almost like they've got eyeliner on. The teeth are white like extremely white. And the women always have this like slight kind of smoky eye detail to them. It's very weird. It always looks like, like these features are just hovering over their skin. It's so hard to explain. Like, I wouldn't be surprised. I don't think that's his smile. I think that smile has been added on. You know, in the face at, uh, face pic, there's a um, smile feature because, oh no, actually maybe. Oh yeah, maybe. It's hard to tell because I was gonna point out the kind of dips in his smile of, of his beard when he smiles. But if you look here, it does do that. <laughs> I don't know why somebody would look at that and think, oh, that that's fine, I'll post it. <laughs> like what makes them think, oh yeah, I'll just, that's absolutely fine. And that's the thing, when tons and tons of people are using the same app with the same filters, everybody looks the same and it becomes very, very, very obvious what apps and what filters they are using. And it becomes extremely easy to spot. It's almost like the bold glamour TikTok filter in an app.
with a, a few different features, you know? It's painfully, painfully obvious to spot. So this one is of, I forget her name, Jackie, I want to say. This is a photo shoot for a wedding. So let me just say something. Photo shoot for a wedding. This time, she's not advertising anything, I believe. It's just for a, oh, was it for a wedding or the wedding? Hang on, let me have a look. Okay, I actually can't find this post. If it was a wedding collection and she's selling something, Photoshop bothers me. If this was just her doing a photo shoot for herself for her wedding day, I literally couldn't give a shit. Like, I do not give a shit. Use filters and enjoy them. She's got video up where she very much looks like herself, lovely and color corrected, but she doesn't look filtered and all that kind of stuff, whatever. Does she look a little bit cinched in here and there? Yeah, she does. Um, if you look under her elbow by the feather boa, feather boa, the, the ruffly feather sleeve, you can see the like kind of gown thing she's got on goes in at a, a weird angle. Her hip, if you kind of trace it around, obviously isn't there. That's not her body shape by the looks of it. And if you look around her as well, she's against a background where the wood does bend and curve. So clever because you're not gonna see those wobbly lines because they're naturally within her. Um, her background, again, comparing a picture to video, I never think is fair because there's a difference. I always use myself as an example between me doing this for a picture. I'll never pose that. And then me talking like this, like my double chins didn't see like that. And then me like posing like this, you know what I mean? So I don't think it's fair to ever compare a video of someone moving to a still shot of someone, right? But yeah, there's Photoshop going on here. Definitely a bit of skin retouching, color correction. I'm guessing flashes were going off on here. So that's why one looks, one bit of lighting looks duller compared to the other. Helping with all the right shadows in the right places, the highlights in all the right places. A really lovely picture. Definitely retouched a little bit for a bit of glamour kind of shot kind of look to it. I do love this flash, like flash, like old kind of um, Terry Richardson style kind of like lighting. Like put it on a white background and you know what I mean. But yeah, things like that flash is gonna help create a really nice shadow under her chin. Honestly, making her jawline like a bit more prominent compared to when it's just like the studio lights on the other side. Again, retouching gone on here, but do I care? It looks like it's just for her wedding shoots. She looks great. She looks nice on both sides. She looks stunning in the video, which isn't retouched either. She looks amazing. If you wanna do a nice shoot to make you feel good about yourself on your big wedding day, I don't care if you're selling me a wedding collection, don't do that. But you know, other than that, it's, I, I, whatever, it's fine. There is something to be said though, and how like, especially influencers, I feel like they feel the need to always have to retouch themselves, and retouch photos, almost like, especially, what's her name again? Jacqueline Hill, who was one of the OG beauty influencers, she rose with the rise of filters and face tune and face pick and all that kind of stuff. So it kind of feels like it's just part of who these people are. You know, like I don't ever expect to see the original OG beauty influ influencers without a filter on. Not that that's okay, but I almost feel like it's part of their branding, almost like the Kardashians. Like you almost expect it with them. You know, you, you expect it as default. Again, not that that's okay, but I wonder if it's just within them to naturally be like, nip and tuck me a, a bit here and there without feeling the enormous kind of like um, social pressure as a reason why people use filters. Do you know what I mean? You know, th they're, they're not looking at it and thinking, oh, I wish I could be like that because that is just who they are online and they're okay with that. Do you know what I mean? Let me know if you know what I mean and if you agree. Okay, let's take a look at these pictures. This is a new app that I couldn't find, but it says edit your photo like a pro. Yeah, this starts relatively natural looking, um, especially her, she's very natural with the freckles. And then the older woman at the end is very unnatural. I don't know why they've done that. And obviously I don't think the app works with a slide, but, but this is honestly how easy it is now to edit your photos. In fact, I believe TikTok have just added a feature that pretty much does the same thing. So let's have a look. Yeah, there's a retouch. Hang on, let me film this. So there's already apps like this called Snow. Um, Snow, Face Tune, do it now as well. But within TikTok, in the new TikTok update, you click on the retouch and you can smooth your skin out. Ooh, see how it keeps pause? It still looks very unnatural because it's just blurry as all hell. Teeth. Uh, <laughs> what's depth? Okay, so that's kind of like contouring, kind of like add shadows in, in the right places. Lip color, no, no, we'll, we'll leave that. Eye select, you could do eye colors as well. I hate that. The eye ones always look really cheap and crap, don't they? How natural can we get this looking? 
Okay, let's go there. Teeth down to a more natural look. Depth down as well. I think that looks pretty realistic. Yeah, I think that looks pretty realistic. All the way up looks like an awful blur filter, but if you just do it a little bit, look how that just knocks out some of the redness in my skin. So that's really all these apps are. And now it's within TikTok, probably the most used app by influencers nowadays, you know? And from what I know, there's no, there's nothing that says like a filter is being used or like the retouch tool has been used. Unlike the bold glamour filter, for example, or no makeup makeup filter, at least you're being told there's a filter there, but there's nothing that tells you there. This is a really good one that I saw. There is audio with this, but my my phone can, um, couldn't record it. The caption with this video says, filtered versus unfiltered makeup routine. Remember, filters not only blur imperfections, but also completely change how makeup looks. And this is that whole conversation, isn't there? Like there's so many TikTok videos now where people are showing you how these kind of like Instagram makeup routines actually make your skin look and how products actually perform on your skin in real life when you're out and about doing your everyday life, you know? And you can see like, not only does it make everything kind of like look more seamless and perfect and like the foundation, for example, really does cover up everything. The concealer covers up everything. The blush even just looks a little, like a lot more seamless. Like it's taking away all texture from your skin, all um, uneven skin tone. And this is the thing is, this may be a blurring filter, but you also have to take into consideration things like lighting. If, um, if the filter has like a bluey tint to it, if it has a cool tone to it, because for example, on my Instagram, if I use a filter that's a little bit blue or um, has, like, has like an added whiteness to it, I will say that because I have rosacea and you can't see it in that picture, it's because I've, I've used a bluey tint in one of my one of my pictures. I'll never use it on a sponsored post or a product review, but every day out and about, I think the, the filter's called like daily or something, and it just makes everything like a little bit brighter, a little bit lighter with a bluey white tint knocking a lot of redness out of my skin, making it look more even. So there's so many things you have to consider other than just skin blurring filters, lightening up your picture, putting the right highlights and shadows in the right place can completely change how products and makeup look like they perform on your skin. So let me know what you think of all of those in the comments down below. Let me know if you like this kind of like just reacting to Instagram versus reality pictures as well. I'm trying to find some more interesting ones because they were semi-interesting. But let me know in the comments down below. You can watch the whole Instagram versus reality playlist here. Some general light entertainment here and I'll see you over there.